Firstly, the company who want to raise the fine and these are the investors. This is the SPV in the middle. This is for example the project and this is the capital. Okay, how the process will go? Firstly, the investors will subscribe into the SPV, the suku, and the SP and the investor will pay the capital to the SPV, and then the SPV will enter into mudarabah agreement with the company. In mudarabah agreement, the SPV is the investors or in other terms, it will call the Rabun Mal, while the co the company is Mudarif, which means the company is appointed as manager to invest the capital to of the investor in a project. The Mudarif will invest the capital of the investor in a project. Then the project is actually in the form of restricted project. Why restricted project? Because the project had been agreed before in the agreement where Mudarib already know in which area will he invest and what is expected profit from the project. A detailed plan will be agreed in the Mudaraba agreement between the SPB and also the company. In case uh, of how the fine or the liquidity will be invested and basically there is no contribution from the company because the company will only contribute in the form of effort, skill and time. The only contribution, the capital contribution only come from the Rob Bullman which, which is the SPB or the investor. Okay. In terms of a loss, in case of a loss, loss will be borne by the SPV. Uh, it is provided that there is no negligence from the company in terms of managing the project. While uh, if they gain profit, the profit ratio between the SPV and the company could be agreed in the Mudaraba agreement. For example, the profit is 70 to 30. 70 will go to the SPV while the 30 will go to the company. I'll be okay. Damn, my car still smells like marijuana. My mom is going to kill me. SPV will issue the support. The investors will subscribe for the suku. The each investor's purchase of suku could represent units of equal value in the Mudaraba capital and are registered in the names of suku certificates holders on the basis of undivided ownership of capitals in Mudaraba capital. Means the investors will provide capital to the SPV. The SPV will act as a trustee on behalf of the investors. Later on, the SPV and the company will enter into a Mudaraba agreement. Under the Mudaraba agreement, the SPV will be become a Rabulman and the company will become Mudari. SPV agrees to provide capital and the company provides, to, provides under the Mudaraba agreement. The purpose for the agreement is to generate profit from the capital. The profits later on will be divided between the SPV and the company according to their Mudaraba agreement. Finally, upon the maturity period, the SPV will return the capital to the investors 
redeeming the Sukhu certificates. Traffic's backed up from corner to corner, so I guess I'll hit the highway. Welcome to the maturity period of the Suku. On maturity of Suku and Mudaraba, the Mudaraba enterprise, the Mudaraba enterprise, the assets would be dissolved in accordance with the terms of the Mudaraba agreement. Thus, the assets need to be dissolved and turned and liquidated and turned into cash. Okay, the Mudarib in this situation would exercise the purchase of undertaking to call the investor or the company to buy the Suku Mudaraba assets. However, since Suku Mudaraba is all about pre agreed agreement, pre agreed terms, and pre agreed value, usually in normal cases, the Sukuk Mudaraba property will be purchased at the pre agreed value as stated in the Sukuk Mudaraba agreement. Taking to example, after 5 years, where the Sukuk Mudaraba assets have achieved a higher, vet at a higher market price, at the maturity period of the Sukuk, the company will be at a profitable situation where the company only have to pay the pre agreed value of the Sukuk Mudaraba assets, which means they only need to pay the face amount of that of the Sukuk Mudaraba assets and not the market value of the assets. This is not profitable and this makes the Sukuk Mudaraba not to be not to be preferable either at Sharia perspective and also the conventional perspective. However, if the assets here are purchased at the market price, at the market value, at a very high price, it will be profitable that the proceeds can be used as a service to serve the outstanding amounts due to the investor. The investor also would be entitled to a return comprising of their rate shares at the Sukuk Mudaraba at the market value and the profit generated by the Mudaraba enterprise from the liquidation of the assets. Moving on to the second one, have a good day. For Mudaraba Sukuk to be tradable, at least a one third of the Sukuk Mudaraba assets should be in tangible forms. To serve the purpose of Sukuk, tangible forms can be used to generate profit, to generate money, where it could be invested. However, it is a common practice that up to 90% of the Sukuk Mudaraba assets is kept in cash form and only the balance of the 10% is invested in certain business. This conduct will affect the tradability of Sukuk because in general, Sukuk has to have tangible assets behind it because in a total investment of cash, it will incur riba in its premium. Thus, in order for us to prevent riba from occurring in the Sukuk Mudaraba, there shall be a strict liability stated in, uh, in the Mudarab, Sukuk Mudaraba agreement for at least one third of the Sukuk Mudaraba set to be kept in the tangible sets.